Great to have you with us in our first story. The Anglican Church Ghana has commenced investigations in the, into the conduct of the priest who was captured kissing three students in a video that has since gone viral on social media. The church says it is deeply saddened by the event and has promised to deal with the issue in accordance with their high moral standards. We'll look at that statement shortly, but first, let's see the video which caused a stir on social media. Live on Joy News today. Now, some Ghanaians have been reacting to this video on social media. Let's read some of these comments. Right, um, we will be looking at those comments on social media, but let's look at that statement by the Anglican Church, and that's what you have on your screen. It's been signed by the Venerable Dr. George Dawson Amar, he's Executive Director for the Metropolitan Archbishop or the of Ghana. Um, right, so the statement as we has it says, the attention of the hierarchy of the Anglican Church Ghana under the leadership of the most reverend Dr. Cyril, Cyril Kovner Ben Smith has been drawn to a circulating video of a priest kissing some female students. And it goes on to oh, talk about how um, it's a matter of concern to the school and that as well, there will be investigations in there. Now, this video has been going viral on social media since yesterday, attracting numerous comments. And, and there have been many calls as well for this priest to be punished. It says the church is saddened by the news and wish to state expressly that thorough investigations has immediately been instituted into the matter and the action of the said priest will be dealt with in accordance with the norms and values of the Anglican communion where morality is extremely revered in the church. It says, meanwhile, all efforts are being made to engage the students concerned through counseling sessions to avert any psychological issues that may arise as a result of the viral video. Like I said, it's been signed by the Venerable Dr. George Dawson Amwa, Executive Director to the Metropolitan Archbishop of Ghana. We've been joined via Zoom by the, the Executive Director of Africa Education Watch, Kofi Asari. Now, Kofi, we understand that this is a school where this happened. Um, what do you make of this video? Uh, good, um, good, good, good morning to you and your cherished audience. This is an unfortunate occurrence in a tertiary institution, um, apart from the moral aspects. It's unfortunate because then COVID, the least a leader would do in an environment that he is tasked to ensure the observance and compliance of those he is leading in respect of the court protocols would be, you know, um, I mean, it would not be to actually break this protocol in the full air of, of, of um, if you like, his constituents. And so it doesn't matter well for leadership because the person being seen to be breaking the protocols is the one, the very one who is in charge of ensuring that the protocols um, are observed in the, in the institution. And that is why for us, it is very unfortunate. Um, indeed, we have since petitioned the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, which is the regulator of tertiary institutions in Ghana. St. Monica's College of Education is a tertiary institution under the regulation of the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, formerly called the National Council for Tertiary Education. We have formally petitioned the director general to externally investigate this particular conduct and not only sanction as appropriate, but also make a determination as to whether 
forcibly kissing students is a permitted practice in tertiary institutions. Mm, mm, mm. So, so you want the, 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 the service to educate us to find out if indeed it is a practice to kiss students on the lips. But I, what I want to know from you is that aside from the issues you raised about COVID, is it ethical for something like this to happen in the school? Exactly. So that, that is the question we are asking the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, the regulator of tertiary institutions, that it should, as part of its investigation, make a pronouncement as to whether it is an acceptable ethical practice in public tertiary institutions for lecturers or for um, staff of the, of, of the institution to forcibly kiss their students in public under the guise of a religious ritual. That determination has to be made by the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. Okay. Because as we are informed, it is his justification was a religious one. So to the extent that the institution is a faith-based institution, we need that pronouncement to guide not only um, the Anglican church or its schools, but also other faith-based institutions that may be involved in other practices that may not be ethically acceptable by the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission's own standards in managing tertiary institutions in the public sector of Ghana. Right. Now, now I, I don't know if you've seen the, the response from some students. Some, some of the students say that the reverend was simply um, awarding these students and i've even seen a statement which is purported to be from concerned students we are yet to verify if they are is indeed from the school but they say that we should not criticize him he was just awarding them um for doing well so this was his way of awarding them exactly it is in recognition of the suspicion that this is not a new practice. I've, we have read several commentary on social media about people who have known the Reverend, who I'm told is also a lawyer, and, um, and also other students in the school suggest that this is not the first time it is happening. Like, it's actually a practice that he, 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 he really engages in. So the issue is that once it is, it is emerging that this is a regular, a regular practice for the Reverend, and it's likely to be a regular practice for other people who may believe in such religious or religious rituals. It is proper for the regulator of tertiary institutions to intervene and make a pronouncement that validates that particular practice or conduct or um, invalidates it. Because at the point, there must be um, a balance between what is seen as a religious practice acceptable within the religious circles and what is also seen as um, an acceptable ethic within our public tertiary education space. This is not too different. This is not too different from the issues of religious rights that we experience in West Lagos and all that. Practices that are backed by religious beliefs, okay? Must, must situate within the, the ethics of the Ghanaian society. But because GES is responsible for secondary schools, they have been handling that one. Well. This is a tertiary institution, and it falls within the remit of the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission to determine it, whether or not okay. such practices okay. are acceptable okay. um, when it comes to code of conduct for tertiary institutions or staff of the tertiary institutions who are by extension staff okay. of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the Ministry of Education. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Kofi Asari. Please um, hold on for us as we discussed earlier. We would be coming back to you later in the bulletin. For now, let me go to Mampong, where Ohiming Teria is standing by. Um, Ohiming, so tell us what you have gathered at Mampong. Yes, uh, Daniel, uh, I, I must say there's a uh, wild... 
Right, Oh Heming Teria is, is with us. Oh uh, Heming, pardon me, we lost you earlier. Now you are at Mampon where this incident occurred. Uh, please go back to the beginning of your answer. Hello, Daniel, can you hear me? Yes, it's better now. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, there's a wild condemnation uh, from the residents of Mampon against uh, the conduct of the Reverend Minister. Uh, whom a uh, majority describe as uh, Reverend Father and Labi, uh, though uh, we are yet uh, to uh, speak to uh, Reverend Father Labi, uh, there are concerns uh, from the residents uh, against his actions. Uh, the public uh, believe that in the era of COVID-19, uh, the action of the father uh, is the recipe for uh, disaster. Uh, they believe if there is indeed uh, a program to commend uh, students for uh, a good work done. Uh, they expect him uh, to use uh, a other means uh, rather than uh, resorting to a case uh, which they say uh, is not in good. Uh, it's not a good uh, practice. Uh, some of them, especially the women I spoke to, uh, indicate that uh, the students involved. Uh, will be uh, affected and will be embarrassed even when they go out in public. People will be pointing, uh, accusing uh, fingers at them. And they say these are not just students. Some of them are married uh, women. Uh, so they expect the Reverend Minister to know better. And to some extent, they say uh, the action of the Minister uh, should not go unnoticed. It should be reprimanded uh, by the church and then the school authorities as well. And if possible, uh, this. Uh, should take interest in the action of the Reverend Minister. Uh, currently, uh, we are at the premises of Mampon, uh, uh, St. Monica's uh, uh, College of Education, uh, to speak to uh, school authorities uh, to understand uh, what school authorities will make uh, of this whole scenario and the actions authorities will be taking. Even in the community, uh, they expect that uh, the church, as an Anglican church, uh, should take interest and investigate the conduct of the Reverend Father. Okay. Um, do we know anything more about Reverend Father Labi? It's information about him is a bit scanty. Just that uh, right in the community, I, I fish out. Uh, he's likely from the uh, residents I spoke to. The Reverend Father uh, is a member uh, in good standing He's a lawyer. Uh, That's what the people uh, tell me. This is just, uh, I'm yet to confirm to that the Reverend Father is not just a Reverend Father, but he's a lawyer uh, by profession and he's trained with a good standing uh, with the Ghana Bar Association. And beyond that, uh, he's also a lawyer for the St. Uh, Monica Education College. Uh, so all these information are unconfirmed. I'm yet to confirm uh, this information that I picked from members of the public in Asante Mampon. So like I said, we'll be getting more details from the school authorities and then from the education directorate. Uh, in fact, in the uh, Mampon Township, everywhere you go, you see people uh, gathered in groups, either watching the video on a mobile phone and also uh, passing comments. Uh, so. It's hard to see uh, people, you know, watching the video without passing a comment. Uh, so I must say that generally in Mampon, uh, it's been circulated, uh, you know, widely. Uh, people now are aware of the issues and they want authorities involved uh, to uh, take action as quick as possible uh, to avert, for instance, uh, spread of COVID-19. For instance, any of them uh, has a COVID a suggestion from uh, the public about the students themselves and you know how they're reacting to what the public is saying about this we've gotten some statements purported to be from concerned students who have no problem with what was going on we saw that some of the students were excited even in the video uh, what are you picking in that regard uh, like uh, i said earlier uh, on the campus of uh, the school, I've seen uh, students uh, moving around, but unfortunately, we are not allowed uh, to mm. speak to them until we get the necessary permission mm. uh, from the school authorities. Uh, 
Uh, so yes, even in the Mampon Township, uh, this uh, issue has come up. People uh, think that, yes, they've seen that defense from the students, uh, allegedly from the students. It's something that uh, the residents themselves cannot confirm. Uh, so for now, I wouldn't uh, say that indeed uh, this supposed uh, release or letter from the students that we are reading is mm. actually from mm. uh, students of mm. Nampong, mm. uh, St. Monica's. Mm. Uh, so we, we, let's find out from the school authority. Definitely we'll be speaking to the school uh, student uh, uh, leadership here uh, to understand if indeed they have any concerns as far as this issue is concerned. Uh, but in, in the community, people think that, yes, definitely it's not a uh, surprise uh, to hear that students will come to the uh, defense of the minister. Uh, they think that it is an unusual thing, it's a normal thing for students to do once some of them uh, even enjoy the mm. art whilst, uh, uh, you know, it, the, it was the art going was on. ongoing. Oh, Ming Terry, thank you so much. We'll come back to you when there's more. Executive Director for ARC Foundation and Gender Activist, Reverend Dr. Angela Jamina Bwaje has joined us via telephone. Um, thanks so much for joining us, Doc. Um, your, your reaction to this statement and um, especially that of the Anglican Church as well? Well, thank you very much, Daniel. I'm not sure I have uh, seen or read a statement from the Anglican Church that's any. And um, I'm just hearing your reporter. Um, and I'm not sure exactly right. what so, so what Right, so what they are saying, mm -hmm. if I may catch you up, is that um, they are investigating the matter, they are saddened by the news, and um, he will be dealt with in accordance with the norms and values of the Anglican Communion, where morality right. is extremely revered in the church. Where? Where morality is extremely revered okay. in the church. Right. Okay, so that's comforting to know. Um, that the church is saying they're going to go into it. You would know from scriptures that there's something called the Holy Kiss. But we also know as Christians that we read our biblical text within context and that even our understanding must come to us also within a certain cultural framework. Now, the Word of God is supreme, um, but it's worked out in our daily life, you know, according to the context in which we live in. And so, um, while this may not be seen in a, in, a, in, in a certain cultural context, I think it might even be strange if it's happening between uh, the opposite sexes, assuming it was even the Holy Kiss. Because my understanding of the biblical text on Holy Kiss is actually something that, you know, the men did to one another on the cheek in that culture. Okay? In that culture. It mm. depicts a uh, fellowship. It depicts uh, friendliness, it depicts uh, even, even uh, you know, bonding, uh, family bonding, and so on and so forth. And so a certain kind of show of affection is not wrong, but the cultural context and the, and the actual you know, uh, interpretation must be done correctly. Right. What I saw this morning, I was a bit surprised, you know, uh, to put it mildly. Um, even if you look at the, uh, the video um, well, you would see that the females, that was the last part that I watched, she seemed to be resisting in a certain way, you know, uh, unless I was reading it wrongly and they are used to it. But then there was still, the embrace was still, one was even longer than the other. Oh, I was asking myself, what exactly is going on? Especially within the historical background of... Uh, knowing that church leaders, not all, some, some have greatly abused their authority and they are over, over students and over pupils and so on. We can't run away from the fact that we have had these things in our churches, some of which is continuing. So seeing something like this uh, is, is a problem, to tell you the mm, truth. Mm, but I would mm. want it to be properly investigated, maybe something that has gone on over a period of time and it's normal in the school. However, is this something we still want to encourage? And we are also looking at the issue of uh, COVID challenges around this time. I'm not sure exactly what we are seeing here, but right. it's certainly troubling to me. And, and, and um, you referred to the third student. Uh, we are looking at that right now as we speak. She seems to be drawing her head back. Yes. Um, as yes. if she may not so, want to be kissed. Exactly. And you know, affection must be wanted. Okay? If you look at issues.
issues around uh, sexual violence or assault or harassment, um, the only the critical thing is, is it unwanted? Is it unwelcome? Okay, and if it's not welcome, you don't force it on another person. And especially if you're a person in authority, then the dynamic becomes even more, you know, uh, uh, more challenging because then the person has to accept it because you have authority over them. And we know too many of such cases of people abusing their authority um, as, as whether as father figures or authority figures, mother figures, whatever it is, over people who are not powerless, you know, who are powerless to say, no, we don't like this. And I mm. think that's why it's important for us to understand whether this is something that's acceptable in the school uh, during mass. Uh, 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 is it really, in, even in our cultural context, something that we want to encourage? In our health context, is it something we want to encourage? You know, and so on. So I can't condemn completely because I'm not exactly sure all that is happening there. But if we get to know, I think we need to address it in such a manner that it wouldn't look it wouldn't be an abuse of authority. Thank you so much, Dr. Reverend Dr. Angela Jonah Abwaje, for joining us. I'm yet to be us. ordained as Reverend. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I'm a little licensed minister. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. She's also executive director for ARC Foundation. Let's go back to Kofi Asari because 446,321 candidates have begun. The West Africa Senior School Certificate Examination, WASI, in 965 schools across the country. Now, Kofi, you have been monitoring this exercise over the years. What are you looking forward to this year, looking at what happened in 2020? We, we are looking forward to a very successful examination devoid of any incidents of more practice and um, and a, a, a successful examination in the sense that our students are adequately prepared to deliver and deliver well to the best of their abilities we are confident in the uh, in the preparations that the government to adequately prepare them for this examination. And uh, we think that our students have the best of preparations to deliver during the WASI 2021. We have also indicated to the West African Examination Council in our previous uh, WASI report that it's important for the security of questions to be made a top priority to ensure that questions are not opened until they are opened in the full glare of candidates and invigilators in the examination hall. That questions should not be opened unless they are, I think, 30, or 30, 30 minutes or so to the start of the examination. And most importantly, that there must be an external invigilator in every examination center for the practice of having one person externally be doing English so that there will be no external science center A doing English should be a thing of the past. We need to have external invigilators from WIAC at every center during every paper so that we are assured that teachers who normally connive with students, as has been the case, and as WIAC has successfully prosecuted many, should not have a leeway as WIAC could have their external supervisor in the school. If we have these basic things in place, we should be able to reduce to a higher level any instances and also as sure the Canadian public that there would be a very, very successful WASI 2021. Um, before you go, Kofi, the, a member of the Education Committee of Parliament, Dr. Clementa Pack, has alleged that in about 75 schools, the past questions for which we pay 34 million CDs have not been delivered. Um, are you aware of this? 
Well, I am aware that some schools have received their past questions and some are yet to receive their past questions. So, for example, in a school, in a school like our senior high school, in the in, in, in Bono, for instance, they have received their past questions. Right. Unfortunately, the, the connection um, seems to be failing us. Uh, Kofi Asawi, thank you very much. We would end the conversation at this point. We stay a while on education-related matters, and Minister Dr. Yao Seiduk Chum has assured of swift interventions to address challenges confronting implementation of the free senior high school program. He says there are engagements between the buffer stock company and the senior high schools to ensure timely delivery of food items to schools. The minister was meeting with representatives of 120 government schools from the Ashanti and Western North regions in Kumasi. Prince Apia was there in our report. Delay in the supply of food items and inadequate infrastructure have been identified as major challenges confronting the senior high school education. Leadership of the Conference of Heads of Assisted Senior High Schools, CHAS, in Ashanti and Western North regions have been meeting with the Education Minister on ways to address these challenges. Alhaji Yakub A.B. Bubakar as CHAS president. We needed some furniture, some of our buildings are under construction and they have not been completed. And all these areas has assured us of the effort they have made so far and would ensure that they get them done for us so that we can run our schools effectively. In some areas, we have had some few challenges of the supply of food items to run our schools. There too, he has assured us and given us a timeline within which this will be a thing of the past, we will not experience it. And uh, the general demeanor of the minister is wonderful, and uh, we appreciate it so much. And we are sure that he will go by his way so that soon those areas that we see as gray areas in the administration of education will be a thing of the past. Minister of Education Dr. Ose Duchum at the end of the meeting assured Charles' leadership of plans to improve the situation. So these are individuals who toil day and night to make sure our children are fed, uh, to make sure that uh, everything that the children need are provided. Issues about making sure that food gets to them in a timely fashion is something that we discussed. Uh, they are working with us and buffer stock to make sure there's timely delivery of food items uh, to their schools. Uh, we also discuss uh, issues that borders on infrastructure. Uh, the schools that have been completed, how we operationalize them, get them the furniture that they need, the ones that have not been completed, how we can take steps to ensure that we complete it for them. On the double track system, Dr. Duchum said schools operating the system have reduced by 10 percent. Um, there are some schools that are no longer doing double track. Uh, there are some schools that have a hybrid kind of double track. If you go to Kumasi High School now, as I speak with you, there are no two batches of Form 1s, there are no two batches of Form 2s. So they are facing double track, uh, uh, facing it. It's linked with infrastructure, and as the contractors, by the grace of God, complete most of our buildings for us, then the double track will be no more. Meanwhile, the leadership of Charles is counting on the minister's assurance. We mentioned to him we needed some furniture, some of our buildings are under construction and they have not been completed. And all these areas has assured us of the effort they have made so far and would ensure that they get them done for us so that we can run our schools effectively. Schools have been charged to put in measures to improve on their WASI performance by 10%. Prince Apia, reporting. Live and Joe News Desk. Let's go back to the WASI and Mamie Sinyamin Thompson has been monitoring some of the schools where the examination has begun. Uh, Mamiesi, what have you observed? So, Daniel, if you can see me behind me, some activities going on there. Those are students working on sculpture and leatherwork at the Accra High School. And these, be, these students are working for their future on these projects. They have been working for two weeks to come 
to do this final project that they are working on right now as I speak to you. There are also some of the students in their classrooms writing um, their papers. So on the WASI timetable, these students are visual art students. They have started their practicals yesterday and are continuing throughout this week. I am, and I am told that they will be doing this for about two weeks before they start with core French orals and also English orals sometime um, in two weeks time. And so the WASI has begun officially from yesterday. Here at the Accra High School students look very calm, relaxed, especially those doing their practicals. Um, others who will be writing the French and orals, you can see them in cliques and in groups who are trying to you know, prepare for the final day. They have been sharing ideas, learning from one another. And so th that has been my observation from some of the schools that I've visited, like the Accra Girls School and others. So um, currently we are at the Accra High School, Daniel, and this is what is happening here now. Right, well, Messi, if you can hear me, I was, I was simply asking, they're working hard at their WASI, like you said, they're working on their future. Do they seem nervous about the examination? I mean, they didn't have the most regular of terms going into the exam. Uh, exactly so, um, Daniel, but when my observation has been that they are not nervous, in fact, they look relaxed. And I asked uh, the assistant headmistress in taking through them through a series of lessons, even on weekends, to prepare them for this day. And so they have had enough preparation. Sometimes, too, they have been taken through a series of um, psych-ups. They've been giving them encouragement to be able to uh, um, enable them to work on their projects. And so they do not look nervous at all to me. In, in fact, they look relaxed, going about their duties and ensuring that the work that they are doing is, 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 is brought to perfection, Daniel. Now, um, th this issue we've been hearing, Mami and Sia, about the past questions being given to the students. I don't know if the students of Accra High have received their past questions. Can you come again, Daniel? I didn't I was hear your question. About the delivery of there, there's some people, you know, the using the hammer and the rest, so there's a little noise here. Yes, yes, I, I can understand. Um, I was simply asking about the past questions which the Ministry of Education was supposed to deliver to the students. Have these Accra High students been given their past questions? Okay, so if I get if I get you, you are asking about the past questions from the right. ministry, yes. And uh, rightly so, the ministry did give to the students uh, past questions. The academics headmistress has been telling me that that is, went a long way to help them prepare for their exams. They went through the past questions, you know, even discussed with their colleagues to be able to prepare them for this day. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Amiesi Nyamisha Thompson, for joining us from the Accra High School here in the Greater Accra region. Let's go back to the Ashanti region now. And President Ekufado will this morning break ground for the construction of 111 hospitals. The President last year pledged to build hospitals in all districts without them in 12 months. Information Minister Kujo Pong Nkroma on Sunday announced that government has so far secured 88 different parcels of land for the construction of 101 districts, six regional and two new psychiatric hospitals. Love FM's Nanaya Ojima is currently at Trede, where the ceremony will take place today. He joins us live with details. Nanaya, tell us about preparation. <laughs> Right, Nanel Jima um, there from Treadel. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to hear you, Nanel. Um, if you can reposition yourself. Um, I saw you standing in front of um, sort of a notice board or a sign. Uh, we know, of course, that government through the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, GIIF, has secured a $100 million startup fund for these hospitals. They're supposed to cost 17 
million dollars each and so as time goes on those will be released um, let's hear information with this Akujo upon Kuma on Sunday as he announced the details of this project 101 district hospitals will commence on Tuesday the 17th of August 2021 the project will also see to the provision of two specialized hospitals, one for the middle belt, one for the northern belt of the country. These are psychiatric hospitals. And then a redevelopment of the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. There will also be the development of six new regional hospitals and one extra regional hospital for the western region. The District Hospitals project, as you recall, was first announced in April 2020 by President Akufuado during his eighth COVID update to the nation. And it is programmed to take between 12 months to complete each one from the point of commencement. Now, since its announcement, the Project Implementation Committee, chaired by Chief of Staff, Madame Akusia Frema Oseopari, has been uh, delivering a number of objectives. One, to secure the physical location of 101 sites. Currently, they have secured 88 of those 101 sites. Not just securing the physical location, but also securing title to the parcels of land, 88 out of 101 so far. And each, each, each of these parcels is about 15 acres to be able to do the kind of uh, facility based on the architectural drawings that they are, they are putting up. Um, they've also been procuring the services of um, consultants. You know, for all of these projects, they are what you call project consultants. Let's go back to Nanae Ojima, who is standing by from Trede, um, where the groundbreaking ceremony will take place. Uh, Nanae, um, so tell us how preparations uh, have been put in place. Uh, yeah, you know, and now, if you can hear me, uh, what can you report from the area? Right, Nanayao, Juma there, he's reporting live from the Chumakwaoma district where um, the president will perform the sword cutting ceremony. The, yes. The sword cutting ceremony for construction to begin in this 111 district um, projects. Now let's move on to the Upper West Region where Roads and Highways Minister Christian Makwata says roads affected by the torrential rains on Thursday will be fixed in record time. He wants affected residents to be strong whilst governments take steps to fix the situation. Eight municipalities and districts have been cut off from the regional capital following havoc wreaked on their roads. Christian Makwata and his team were in the region to assess the extent of damage on major roads in the region. Rafiq Salam reports. The rains may have stopped at least for the past couple of days. The water may have receded and the bridges remain intact, but the bitumen constructed on top of them are nowhere to be found. They have no roads or streets at the moment. Vehicles are of no importance here. They depend on their foot to carry them through. I met several commuters who defy the odds and bent on crossing from one side of the road to the other. They considered it is not a walk in the park, but a walk for survival. Middle Age Monday Gatewood plus a trade at the Jericho Market. She's aware of the dangers involved in crossing over to the two bridges a few meters apart from each other. I'm afraid of falling inside the water, but I'm going to the market. That's where I will eat. I have to go. If I don't go, I can't eat. So that's why I'm struggling to go. Pupils are also feeling the pinch of the disaster. Mentoro Eric hails from Kandangmane, which is about four kilometers away from the disaster zone, but attends go to the primary school. Me, I ride a bicycle, but as the road cross like this, I come and put my bicycle down here and cross the road and go. And go. How yes. do you cross the road? There was one board here, 
you always climb them. This is not a place for the faint hearted, for one to move from one end of the road to the other. You have to use uh, this route. This is a ladder that was constructed, well constructed, very weak, and then, but that is the only means that they can use to access the other side of the road. Yao Steven, together with a few of his friends, constructed a ladder using jaded and weak boards to enable stranded passengers pass through. It is, however, not for free. My aim of constructing the ladder is to help them to cross, so anybody who uses it pack with one gun is okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rose and Highways Minister Kwesia Mankwata painted a mental picture of the situation after flying for an hour touring the affected areas with an helicopter. From our observation and as I have been informed by my technical team, and I saw it uh, myself visibly, yes, the approaches to the pipe drains and the, and the U drains have been destroyed. The drains themselves are intact because they were solidly built. So all the U drains are intact, all the pipe drains are uh, uh, corbets are, are in place. We are going to make use of boulders in filling uh, what we call the backfill of the of the of, of the corbets and do some stone pitching at certain areas. No, uh, so that we do not experience this again in the future. That World West Legislature, Pencil PNW Ghanim, one of the leading contractors in the country, as one of the contractors who will lead the charge to fixing the roads. We want the people of this region to know that it's not a regional matter. This is a national matter and is going to be treated as such. It's an emergency situation and it will be giving an emergency treatment with all the powers that are at the disposal of President Akufuado and his government. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam, Gorigiri. <laughs>
uh, we are talking about farmlands being affected, and we are talking about houses that are equal being collapsed. And some of these houses that are actually being collapsed are part of the people who are whose farmlands are equal being washed away. So it's a mix of feeling reactions uh, that we currently face in the region. Do you have a number? Yes, we do have uh, the number of farmlands that are being washed away. The number of acres, as of now, is about 700. Per the preliminary situational report that we currently have on the ground, indicate that 722 uh, farmlands have actually been washed away. And the number of farmers is 1,605. So okay. the number of houses that have equally been uh, collapsed or washed away by the flood is 80. And the individuals that are currently displaced are 336. From how many communities? Uh, for, the, for, the, for the communities, we have aggregated into districts. In the Nadole Kaleo district, we have 165 communities. Then in the Jirapa municipality, we have 16 of them. And then the Fiamma Isabuse district, we have about 155 communities being affected. Wow, you definitely have your work cut out for you. Um, that, that's Mr. right. That's why we are using your medium to reach out to organizations, civil society groups who are into disaster management or other uh, relevant distance to come to our aid. Because just like the Rose Minister has indicated, this has become a national issue and not the upper west for that matter. So we are reaching out to every organization that has anything to support this uh, vulnerable to come to the RCC, chaired by the regional minister, and we'll be doing, we'll be grateful to those individuals. Right. Thank you very much, Ahmed Mustafa. He's regional director for the National Disaster Management Organization in the Upper West Region. Live on Joy News Desk with me, Daniel Dazi. Up next is business.